Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin from Sugar MDs. Today we are going to talk about how many carbs should I eat per meal. Extremely common question and we are going to try to reply to this question. It's not going to be one single answer, but I think at the end of the video you will have an idea about how much carb you should eat. So before we move on to the video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like the video and when we get down to or up to actually 30,000 subscribers we are going to start making patient cases that's going to be real patients real uh, life situations and how we treat our patients and that's going to be extremely useful now when it comes to this topic today we are going to talk about is how many carbs you can eat based on actually is based on your gender your age, your activity status, and your diabetes duration and severity. Uh, now in this case, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you have been a diabetic for 20 years, and you are 65 year old, and you are a woman, uh, and you are on three oral medications, and you're on one long time or long term or basal insulin, whatever you call it, or slow acting insulin, you're on three oral agents and one insulin, you're 65, you're inactive, you have hip problems, you have joint problems, you are generally sitting at home, you're really not doing anything much, uh, and you're on medications, and you are around 230 pounds. Uh, I would consider that an obese, so in this case, how many carbs should you eat, right? Uh, my answer to that is very little very little because you're going to be i can imagine you as being very insulin resistant and anytime you eat very little carbs you are going to skyrocket now when i say very little what i mean by that i mean like maybe like 20 to 30 grams of carbs per meal and that's very generous and the reason i say it's very generous is because you know you're really not burning anything yes i know um you know if you you, you may want to eat more, you know, that's the only thing you enjoy nowadays, and I, I understand that. Uh, but if you want to eat more carbs, you're going to need more medications. And sometimes more medications may mean more side effects, but we have a lot of ways, especially at Sugar MDs, we have different ways to help our patients. Um, but if you want to use medications uh, on in addition to what you're already on, um, then I would suggest, you know, you can go up to maximum and that's maximum 45 grams of carbs for a woman at that stage uh, and you may end up needing insulin as well of course we have a lot of non-insulin medications we can use uh, but depending on your activity level again we have an exercise video check it out you know it's it's there uh, basically even for a very uh, inactive people or people with uh, disabilities or joint problems you know we have ways to uh, get them to exercise uh, one way or the other but if you're really not exercising you know you're really looking for 20 to 30 grams of carbs and if you want to force it 45 grams uh, max so uh, I, it, it is very hard to tell these patients not to eat any carbs they're just not gonna listen I'm sure there are some people right now watching this video and saying that oh this doctor is recommending eating a bunch of carbs listen you may be very uh, very savvy very dedicated very um, uh, strong-willed person but a lot of people are not like that and they are just not gonna listen to you unless you give them a reasonable goal so that's my job to get my patients so I may start with them 45 grams I may get them to goal get them some motivation and then we can try to cut their carbs even more again that depends on the individual but you know we sometimes get patients to find them different recipes find them different ways to eat and they they enjoy it and they they do it i think it takes a lot of motivation a lot of coaching that's why at sugar mds what we do is we just coach a lot we stay in touch be directionally texting uh, voicemail phone call video call whatever you name it uh, so we kind of stay on top of them all the time. We see their numbers remotely all the time. That's another thing without having them to do anything, just that they do a finger stick or use a CGM, and we can see their number like all the time. So that's why our patients do really well. Uh, now, yeah, I call this accountability. You know, when people feel accountable, they feel supported, motivated, then they do well. But anyway, so next thing is, uh, I'm, give you another, I'm gonna give you another example. A man who has a, a very active job a very physical job and he is um, 35 
He has type 1 and a half diabetes. He is uh, on one uh, long-acting insulin and two oral agents. Uh, so type 1 and a half diabetics do not end up on insulin right away. So um, though this individual is doing well. Uh, and he also goes to gym uh, five times a week. And he works out uh, one hour uh, on those five days. So I tell this individual that you know my conservative goal for you uh, could be as low as 30 grams of carbs if you want to go really low carb and reduce the number of medications. But if you are very active and you're working out, you must have carbohydrates. This is what your muscles are burning. If you uh, do not eat any carbs, you're going to have significant fatigue uh, with, uh, with exercise. And exercise has many benefits. I know there are a lot of keto people out there, and they think that the, uh, the carbs are to uh, poison for you. Um, that's not true. Uh, you know, you have to have some healthy carbs in your body to make sure that you have enough fuel source for your exercise because exercise will help your cholesterol, etc. Those people who eat fat all the time and not exercise, I don't think they're looking for a very great heart outcome or great uh, cholesterol. Um, so, but the bottom line is, you know, you want to have some healthy carbs, uh, minimum 30 grams if you're very active and exercising five times a week and so forth. But if you, um, are really athletic and you know you're you're an early diabetic and you are physically active and you can try eating 45 up to 60 grams for a man like that uh, and you can still be very fit you can still be controlling your blood sugars very well even if you have diabetes uh, just because you are physically very active so my limit for a man uh, who is active uh, it will be 60 grams to 75 tops. Um, for a woman, my maximum carbohydrate recommendation is 45 grams. Uh, again, you know, that depends on, again, you know, you're looking for, uh, from a carbohydrate eating standpoint, you're looking for a percentage of total um, caloric intake. So if you want to be on the low carb side, you may, you may go down to 30% of your total calories. If you want to be on the more, you know, um, more generous side because you're physically active, you may go up to 35, 40% of your uh, total calories as carbs. Again, the basic thing here, basic thing to understand if you want to keep your blood sugar under control is eating healthy carbs uh, and being physically active. So if you're not physically active, then your goals are down to 15, 20 grams for women and uh, less than, uh, I would say, 45 grams for sure for men. And 60 to 75 is um, the, for men who are very, very active. So again, like let's say you're a 60-year-old man, uh, retired, uh, you're mostly at home, especially with this virus going on, you're not doing anything, you don't want to go outside, etc. Although you can exercise at home, but this is a good excuse not to exercise, right? So if you're not exercising, if you're not doing much, and and you're already overweight or obese, uh, then you should really not eat more than 45 grams at all. And if you want to really control your diabetes uh, with less medications, then you should go 30 grams or below per meal. Uh, again, you can find a lot of carbohydrate alternatives um, uh, for uh, eating. Uh, so you can definitely avoid things with flour and high carb. Actually, if you avoid refined sugars and carbohydrates that are in the market today, uh, you will have much limited options uh, from natural sources. So it's going to be much less effect, you know, effect on your blood sugars. But uh, that is my uh, rule of thumb, as as I described. Um, and then sometimes, you know, for, for people who are like really frail, they're already losing weight um, and they're very advanced age. As we discussed in the previous video, I'm not super, super strict with their blood sugars. I let them go to 150 in the morning, up to 200 after meals uh, for those older individuals. And I don't restrict them too much because they don't have a good appetite to begin with. Um, cancer patients, uh, for example, we um, limit their carbohydrates because, you know, sugar really drives your cancer cells um, but if you are like you're really losing too much weight and you really are not looking to cure this cancer you're on uh, you're only in it uh, to have another you know a couple of months uh, really there's no point of torturing these people with low carbs I just tell them hey you know if if your cancer doctor said that uh, the chances of recovery from this cancer is uh, nothing 
um, then maybe just uh, just enjoy your life. If you have metastases all over your body uh, and you're already uh, on chemo, you don't even have an appetite, I'm not going to give you a diet. That's just stupid to begin with. Uh, so we don't want to really um, uh, do anything like that. But the majority of the time, most diabetics fall into the previous category that we discussed. I hope that video is helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Make sure you give a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you get us to 30,000 subscribers so we can start doing real-life patient cases. Have a wonderful day.